When it comes to, for example, getting low-income people to be able to save for their own future, this is another uh, area where people need support in order to be able to do it. So if you're in a situation in your life where you're just struggling to put food on the table, uh, where you're really struggling to make ends meet, it's going to be very difficult for you to invest and save in your own future or to take the time to sort of imagine yourself in these future scenarios. And I think we have to recognize that for some of the poorest members of our society. Now, some innovative ways around that have come to the fore in recent years, including a method known as prize-linked savings. And uh, I will say, while I said in recent years, this is an idea that dates back at least to immediately after the Second World War in the UK right. uh, through a program right. known as premium bonds. And the basic notion is you create a way for people to create savings accounts that also allows them to play a sort of lottery, uh, a lottery where they can't really lose. So they put in some amount which is, of which money. Is, which is the essential part of this, which is a lottery that you can't really lose. It's like like you either win by saving or you really win by earning a little bit more money on top of that. Exactly, right. Unlike the current lotteries that are run by states and companies all around the world, which are really Where regressive taxes. Loses. Right, yeah. and they're regressive taxes because they're mostly played by the poor. And yep. you can kind of understand why that happens, right? Because sometimes if you're so far in the hole, you're so far in debt, the idea of putting a few dollars in a savings account doesn't seem to be a bridge to yeah, that imagined point? better scenario, right? You feel like you need to make up this huge shortfall. So the only thing that makes sense is to win really big. Yeah. And in that sort of psychology. So I think these kinds of um, savings accounts where they take some of the interest and put it into a common pool and then hold a monthly or biweekly uh, cash prize drawing have shown a lot of promise in getting people to actually save for their future. So I think we can't always depend on individual people to be able to do this, particularly when it comes to some of those intractable social problems. We need, we need ways around it. One of the... Uh... One of the things that this story reminds me of is um, you talking about your experience of visiting Las Vegas and understanding the strategies of poker players, the really good poker players, the ones that make a living from the game. Because in that tension we just described about, look, <laughs> I'm, I may as well go for it. I may as well try and win big because otherwise what's the point? That's exactly not the, the goal of the professional poker players. So... How do these people, as these kind of outliers of of restrained gambling, how do they self-manage? Because they, they're constantly playing towards a future sense of self. Yes, I found it really fascinating to spend time with these pro poker players, in part because they just so defy the stereotype of the sort of Las Vegas gambler. And part of it really is this idea of peer groups and social norms. So the poker players I talk to, the vast majority of them, I will say there are exceptions. They're sort of people who come onto the scene and are really have a lot of um, sort of brashness about them in the way they play. But, but a lot of them, the vast majority of these men and women who are making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year playing poker, so it really is a profession, uh, they tend to sort of reinforce this norm of slowly grinding away to learn the craft, uh, taking uh, losses and, and working your way through a tournament, not making sort of big, grandiose plays, especially early on in one's career, early on in a tournament, so that you can amass enough chips, amass enough earnings to keep in the game and keep playing. Uh, I also found that some of the best players, including one named Matt Matros, who's been a World Series of Poker champion uh, multiple times, uh, did have strategies like what we talked about with the if-then strategy used by mm -hmm. the teachers and involved... Uh, anticipating situations they might face at the table. So situations where there's someone playing against them who they just really don't like. Uh, they call this sort of vendetta poker when, when there's some, <laughs> right. someone with an like ego. I will crush you. Yeah. Right, right. You've got a little bit of a, a, a thing going on, a rivalry with someone, and you're likely to make not so great decisions, uh, particularly if you're a player who plays kind of by the odds, by the math. Mm -hmm. And uh, Matros, this particular player, has a math degree from Yale. And so he is very much about playing the calculated best uh, way in every scenario, in every hand. He's trying to figure out what is what is 
the highest probability of him getting out of this um, in a good way, in a favorable way for for yeah. the tournament. And and so he sets up these situations in advance in his head. If I'm at the table and I face this kind of scenario with this kind of player, this is what I'll do. So that he can sort of have some sort of strategies, advanced strategies for those moments he faces at the table. But I will say again, that I really do think that a lot of this comes down to how these people kind of work together in a way, they're all competing against each other. But the culture they've created is one in which it's not cool to make sort of rash decisions at the table. It's much more uh, admirable the way they talk about each other. Uh, they sort of celebrate the players that are what they call grinders who right. slowly build uh, build their way into being winners. Sign up for my newsletter at mbs.works. It's called The Works with MBS. I know, not that imaginative. It's a short weekly newsletter, and at its heart is the distillation, a short article about a practical tools so you can be a force for change. Sign up at mbs.works.